they're hiding the truth. They don't want us to see what the tweet is. It's probably so good. Um, do we care about this? I'm going to skip this. John Stewart slams media for breathless Trump trial coverage. Also, um, here Donald it is. Trump once again overnight testing the limits of the judges. If it was televised, would you care? Fuck yes, I would. That would be sick. Oh my I God, that'd be oh so my sick. God. And it should be. Oh. Bag order on the eve of a key hearing. That jury was picked so fast. 95% Democrats. Uh, the area is all, mostly all Democrats. Weighing in on the jury. <laughs> Didn't they release like uh, the media consumption of the jury from the juror pool? And there, there was a dude who gets his news from Trump, uh, from Truth Social, yeah. on there. How was? Uh, oh, that's, that's why he says 95% Democrats. He's like five percent Patriots. <laughs> a potential witness and the prosecution in a radio interview. They have people in the case that have some very serious problems with what they've done. This, as his defense team <laughs> seeks to beat back allegations, he's repeatedly violated the judge's gag order, right. which bars the former president from commenting on jurors, witnesses, I'm, and the I'm DA's really staff. Wait, this so did they hit him with that yet? Alvin Bragg did submit a motion about it, about him violating the gag order. But that they, was, I think, that was the conversation today. That was like uh, before the court proceedings. Like this is what oh, they were Tuesday, talking, right? Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, what they yeah, were yeah. talking about today. That's the whole story. Is that like? Okay. I mean, I don't even know what happened because I so, I started streaming, but I don't know what is literally happening right this moment or what happened today. But uh, they put it on for today because they were going to hit him. I think it's like a thousand dollars for every violation, which is nothing. He might run his mouth. He's got at least a million dollars put aside. Oh, this person said he didn't just get his news from True Social. He said, because he's an investment banker, I read basically everything. I'm on Twitter. I follow True Social posts from Trump on Twitter. I do follow Michael Cohen, Mueller, she wrote, and some more. Yeah, he's just a regular old lib. Okay, still means that he's going on True Social, which in my opinion, if you're going on True Social, you're like insane. You are definitely yeah. a Trump guy. Um. Anyway. Not if you value the truth. Second day of testimony in Donald Trump's criminal hush money trial was wrap, has wrapped up. David Pecker, ex-publisher of the National Enquirer, detailed 2015 agreement with Trump and Michael Cohen to try to kill negative stories about the former president and run negative stories about his political rivals. That's what they were talking about. Morning, Mr. Today. Trump will also face a key witness in this trial. There David Pecker, publisher of the National Enquirer, back on the stand today, expected to help the state flesh out the timeline of an alleged criminal conspiracy to win the White House in 2016. Prosecutors telling the jury that Pecker met with Mr. Trump and his former fixer Michael Cohen at Trump Tower back in 2015. The trio concocting a plot to catch and kill damaging stories about Mr. Trump by paying people off and muzzling them with non-disclosure agreements. Hello, how are you? But it was the release of the Access Hollywood tape that motivated <laughs> Mr. Trump to direct the payoff of Stormy Daniels. Where is Billy Bush say, nowadays? Because he was so concerned his standing with female voters was cratering. I actually and think that argument threatened... hurts um, uh, the prosecution. Like, them, them, the tape, the, the Hollywood X-rated tape, right? Because they're making an argument their argument, their, the way they're trying to make this misdemeanor a felony and make this have something to do with the election is that they're saying, oh, that he went to all of this trouble to hide this, the Stormy Daniels ex say because it would have uh, affected his reputation and how he would have performed in the 2016 election and that he felt that way because of this tape. But that just, to me, the evidence of the, the um, Access Hollywood thing just proves that he had already had this reputation, that this kind of information was known and during the time he was running and that he still won. So I actually think it cuts against them. Yeah, but he definitely, there's still, I feel like there's still intent. Like, you can definitely prove intent, partially because he did openly state state that he didn't want to pay Stormy Daniels until after the election, and then not at all, because it would be no longer relevant. But that kind of, again, that kind of, him, him not wanting to pay her until after the election says that he believed he could survive it. No, I feel, no, he was... <laughs> He I was think, making an argument that, like, we can try to hold off on it until after the election, as in, like, you know, just keep feeding her the lie that we're going to pay her yeah, until after the Alvin, election. 
That's what Alvin Bragg and the DA's <laughs> office wants you to think. Yeah. But the real patriots know the truth. I actually think this, like, I don't care. Because well, if that was the case, then he wouldn't pay her at all, right? I think this is a bullshit case in general. Like, like I think, the, again, I'm all for it. Do whatever. I think the criminal system is weaponized against poor black and brown people every day. So if you want to, you know, find a way to try and stick this guy where it hurts, although the fact alone that this, like, bullshit case of all the things Donald Trump has done is the only thing that they can, like, really pursue this and a couple other things really shows the fact that the criminal system in and of itself is not designed to go after people like Donald Trump. So I don't care, but just in actuality, this is a stupid fucking bullshit case. Oh no, I agree. Um, <sighs> I, I, I agree with everything you said for my, sure. My lawyer, my beautiful, <laughs> my beautiful <laughs> black queen. <laughs> I, I love her very much. Yeah, he should, he should hire you. You guys should you guys should do some pro bono work for Trump. I, I would I would honestly kill it, but my mom I would be disowned <laughs> rightfully so by everybody in my life, and and they should. I would never do that, but I would kill it. Like if I wanted to represent, oh my god. Yeah. You know who would defend you? <laughs> Eric Adams. Oh, oh my god. He'd be like, she's right. I know I, I'm we don't agree on we don't agree on much, but she's defending the rule of law. My mother would literally physically fight me. My mommy is a Nancy Pelosi establishment Democrat in her heart. She would beat my ass. That's so funny. <laughs> She'd be so upset. Anytime I criticize a day, like me criticizing any kind of Democrat, I said something about Fannie Willis just a little for one second. My mommy's uh -oh. like, God damn it, allow me stop your shit. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's, like, a, she's a she's a Fannie defender. My mommy is is again establishment Democrat. Like, please allow me, God damn it. Like she oh, barely that's like, like Hassan. Honestly, the most yeah. the best thing that could have ever happened was my mommy seeing like Eric Adams spin his back to me and like NYPD talking shit on Twitter. My mommy's <gasps> this is not a police act. And my mommy called me like outraged, like this man should not be in a position of power. You see the sexist shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I told you, I told you. When she started police harassing me, my mommy is the type to send me audio notes like, allow me, I'm not like you. I do not hate the police. She saw the police, <laughs> she saw the police on Twitter. She called me like, allow me, you in the people country, the police can do anything to you. I was like, oh, so you know that now. <laughs> so now you know. <laughs> I was, I was too excited to get her to even be upset. <laughs> to go public with a story awesome. of sex with the former reality TV star and encountered Mr. Trump denies. So Cohen paid Daniels no, $130,000 just before voters went to the polls. I did it at the direction of and for the benefit of Donald J. Can Trump. Can a man get some strange? You know, I thought this was America, not like China or whatever. Where I they... don't even know why he paid her like anybody would care. Like, cause like the, the, whole, the allegations are that he had a consensual affair with her, right? Yeah, it's because the one time. <laughs> Who the fuck? It's, the, fuck? it's <laughs> the one time that he was consensual. Time. Yeah. Hey, that time I remember, <laughs> I, it was good. <laughs> I was good that Mr. Time. Trump then later reimbursing. Do you also hate Michael Cohen like Lolo because he's a snitch? And that's like, <laughs> as a, a real lawyer would never turn on his client like that? Oh, well, I don't know about that. Would never turn on that client like that? <laughs> you know what Alex like? Mm, I don't know, I, it might for the wrong client. <laughs> no, I, I'm indifferent. I would snitch on on Donald Trump if I was him. I'm just a hater. Coming Although through a series probably of probably don't help nobody because what did they have? He had to turn over the shit, didn't he? They get all the stuff. Yeah, I mean, he turned over everything. Yeah, if he just he's their he's their star witness. Yeah, that's crazy. Checks. Prosecutors telling the jury Monday they agreed to cook the books on his business <laughs> records, recording the payments as legal expenses. While the defense team told I it's gonna be funny though, because like his team is gonna be like, You can't trust them, folks. He's a criminal. <laughs> he <laughs> served a prison sentence. And it's like, yeah, for you. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you mean for the crimes that he's talking about right now? <laughs> It's so funny. Well, you that, object to bringing that in. That's yeah, the thing. yeah. Like, he's a criminal. We're not gonna say what the charges are. But yeah, he's a criminal. He's just a criminal. Can't be trusted, <laughs> folks. <laughs> well, the jury Cohen cannot be trusted. <laughs> Thirty-four counts there are really go. just thirty-four pieces of paper. It's a case Love as that. to bookkeeping, which is a very minor thing. Now, back in court today, the judge will first take up these potential violations of the gag order. Prosecutors point to several that they say are intentional. <laughs> like, I've done way worse crimes. I can't <laughs> believe bookkeeping is what they got me on. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> how Would you believe it? 
judge to find Mr. Trump, and if he does it again, when, like, asking the US for a more again, serious... The criminal system does this. Like, they want to get somebody on something, and they can't. They don't have anything, so they go and go do bullshit that they know doesn't matter. And again... That's not saying it in this case. This is an anomaly. The U.S. criminal system does not do this to rich, powerful white men. Yeah. So, like, that's fine. Do not your thing. Not only is it an anomaly, but, like, he did, I mean, although the laws that he violated are, are uh, not, pros I feel like not often prosecuted, especially because, like, you do have to be in a position of power to to violate these laws anyway. Yeah, sure. So, like, like you said, it's not, you know, they're not going to hit normal people with that shit, so it's often not prosecuted. He did still technically violate the law. Yeah. So, and, it, and it pisses him off. So that's why I like it. You sound like a nerd, though. I, I mean, fine. I just, like I said, I I, I like it because he gets annoyed. It and just, I think it's funny. I See, to me, let me tell you why I don't care for it, right? Like, anytime they do these, like, I feel like all these kind of fishing expeditions around Donald Trump are, are exactly that. To make, like, the Democrats feel like they're doing something. And the liberals, like my daddy and them, like, feel like there's hope. But that's all it really is. It's like it's this performative circus that I would pr appreciate more if I thought it were going to hurt his or his chances at president or like stop him from being able to do the things that hurt everybody. But I don't think it does. I think in this case, it makes his stupid ass base feel just as they it's not. They're not stopping him from running for president. His, his stupid ass base is generally going to be just as galvanized. Like, oh, my God. This, and the fact that it's a stupid case, they're like, look, look how he's attacked. Blah, 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 blah. Da, da, da. I feel like it's only going to hype them up and they're all going to go out to vote. Meanwhile, our side is like. Oh fuck me! We have nobody. I have fuck this election. Fuck voting. Fuck it all. So like, what's gonna? It's like, yeah, you're gonna annoy him, but you might just annoy him into being president again. I don't. I don't know. I feel like there is one avenue of weakness for Donald Trump amongst like the formerly Republican Party voters, and that is his like, uh, that is the aesthetics. Like he is not civil. Right. And a lot of those suburban, uh, uh, a lot of those suburban conservatives did end up voting for Brandon. I, I kind of so think this just like kind honest. of reinforces their. Uh, this kind of reinforces their their commitment. I, I think there was a point where there were a lot of like the old Mitt Romney Republicans that were like, "Jesus Christ, this looks crazy." Like I feel like there was that when they were like. I don't want to be associated with like these MAGA Republicans and blah, 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 especially like the 2016 time and after that. But I think we've moved so far away from that, that the whole Republican party is just kind of embrace crazy. Like we got to be as right as possible. One band, one sound beyond the foolishness. So, I mean, it hasn't stopped the guy from being still being, who's going to be their, their nominee. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I think they're going to be on board with him. Yeah. I'm, I'm just talking about the margins. Yeah. There is no, the base is unshakable no matter what. That's for sure. Yeah. But the mark, like, they're, like, Biden is destroying Trump on uh, educated white voters, educated white men specifically. Like, it's insane. Trump won uh, that voting block consistently. The Republicans win that voting block uh, consistently. Biden currently in the polls is a 20% lead on him. It's like one of the only. One of the only uh, changes in the positive direction for the Democratic Party. It's crazy. Mm. Yeah, college-educated white men are, are like, they've left the, the Republican Party. The age-old age adage that uh, Chuck Schumer talked about with respect to Pennsylvania, where he said, like, every, every blue-collar vote that we lose, we gain oh, yeah. two in the suburbs. Like, yeah. he was right. That, that technically... <laughs> was a realignment that the Democrats were desperately going after, and it did work. Um, not to say that it's a good thing. Obviously, this spells trouble both spiritually and more holistic fashion for like American politics in general. That's why you're seeing the the Joe Biden wing of the Democratic Party openly advocating for white nativist uh, immigration policies, uh, which will genuinely have... Uh, Worse electoral outcomes for the Democratic Party in the long run, and also more importantly than that, will uh, will make America even more antagonistic towards uh, migrants, undocumented immigrants, and just like anyone who they suspect is a migrant or an un uh, or an immigrant at all. So it it's horrible. It's bad policy. It's bad politics. So of course, perfectly in line with what the Democratic Party does. But that is why they're doing it because they think that they have a. They they now have a new stronghold in the, uh, they now have a new stronghold in the educated, uh, white 
suburban, like high earner population, which is uh, in most circumstances antagonistic to what the Democratic Party presents itself as. It's supposed to be like pro-working class, pro-minorities, uh, things of that nature. I love Mexicans. Joe, I mean, Donald Trump is kind of <laughs> cooking it with the with the with the Latino voter blocks as well. So, yes, it's a shame. It's a shame, but I'm not going to get into Latino community business. I've suggested punishment that while Greg have a video that they hold a meeting with. <laughs> the defense says he must be allowed to defend himself, and reposting something someone else says shouldn't count under this court's order, guys. Well, that will be That's interesting. Crazy. Meanwhile, not under a gag order, Great and truthing. speaking freely, is Michael Cohen, mm -hmm. who was out with some pretty uh, choice words, shall we say, for the former president. I can't, he's not under the gag order. I can't imagine prosecutors are thrilled about this. No, he's not under the gag order. In fact, only Mr. Trump is under the gag order. But Cohen, <laughs> of course, is a key witness for them. So anything that he says right now, he can be cross-examined with at trial. And it just shows you all the baggage that he brings to this case. I don't think we can repeat what he said. I think we in, probably shouldn't. In the tweet, yeah. but fair to say it was Wait, directed was at Mr. Trump. Yes, directly. And essentially goading him into testifying, saying he's so desperate. They're hiding, it. They're hiding the truth. They don't want us to see what the tweet is. It's probably so good. Um, do we care about this? I'm going to skip this. John Stewart slams media for breathless Trump trial coverage. Also, um, uh, what was I going to say? After after this part, like, uh, you guys don't have to, you know, you guys don't have to sit here all day waiting for the rage cage because that's at 730. <laughs> rage cage. Yeah, you guys can hang out. Rage cage. Oh, lit. You know. Yeah, I know. Enjoy the sunshine. I'm going to enjoy the sunshine. I'm going to leave you. Oh, let's yeah. Go sit by the pool if you want. Also, make sure you don't show your phone. Don't you don't show your phone. Yeah. Welcome to the Daily Show, ladies and gentlemen. We yeah, got a great show for tonight. Yeah, we got a show. Thing. You're, you're going to be very excited that you tuned in uh, for this evening. I'll be talking to the great Salman Rushdie. will be joining us later about his new book, Knife. Fabulous uh, book and many other surprises. But before that, it's a big day for Donald Trump. <laughs> Huge. I got a big I got a pee, and also at the top of the hour, you're going to see a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. For $5 or free with a Twitch Prime, oh, here's the three-minute ad break now. I appreciate that. His campaign oh, for yeah, president was interrupted today by the video. trial uh, about the other time that he had tried to run for president. Look, let, let, let's just check in <laughs> in another installment of America's Most Tremendously Wanted. The whole thing is a scam. <laughs> After a week of jury selection, today it was finally time for opening statements, and it turns out the prosecution and the defense do not see eye to eye. The prosecution arguing that Trump's alleged scheme to keep an adult film actress quiet is election interference, pure and simple in those words. Trump defense lawyer Todd Blanche told the jury that the former president, though, did not violate the law. Mm. That's right. This is a classic case of the state of New York versus a no. Uh -uh. <laughs> oh no, he didn't. Uh, I think it's pretty clear he did it. Anyway, this trial will this obviously be a, a test. Boring shit. I can't. <laughs> yeah, I can't even express you. It's also don't a don't test of the enemy's <laughs> ability. I keep trying to care. I don't give a fuck. In a responsible <laughs> way, don't. a task they have acknowledged. They've performed. Poorly me to press in the past. Button. He can? I think to the degree that the <laughs> oh, media no, had lessons power. turned in 16, they seem to have been learned. It's irresponsible it. for cable ride. news networks to give Donald Trump hours and hours of free airtime. Way too much speculation and liberal wishful thinking and attempts oh, to connect dots that did not connect. It's the media's responsibility to not get distracted. I think we were much too busy chasing after shiny objects. All of us have learned some very valuable lessons from the last couple of years um, in delineating what's significant, what's important. So brave. <laughs> Look well at everybody done. is over it. Too. And I'm I think so for this trial, the we will see the seeds of that <laughs> I introspection. I swear, I was trying to camp for like a solid week, like or 
we will learn that learning curves oh, so it's back. We can't, are we can't. <laughs> Here we go. It's on. It's happening. History will be made. Shaping up to be the trial of the century. Maybe the trial of the century. The trial of the century. What just might be the trial of the century. The oh tax my God. man is no, here, Donald not. Trump. He was we don't even get to watch it. To face you can't even see it. Like, that's so fucking crazy. Like, closing I, in around Donald Trump. We didn't get to, the legal I didn't get to watch are starting OJ. to close in on Donald Trump. Yes, this time, Mr. Bond. <laughs> I have a kid picture with OJ. It truly is your what? doom. No, OJ, you... OJ went to the Bahamas after he was acquitted, and my mother, always the abuse apologist, raced over to Paradise Island to hand him her child for a photo. Can I, I see this photo? I literally told my mom, I was like, find this picture. You have no idea what it would, how valuable shit. that photo. I see it. You see me at my Grammy's house all the time when I was a kid, but I don't know where it is right now. It's a very cute picture of me. Like, I'm a little kid, and OJ's holding me. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, my mama... She, I told y'all what kind of person. Look I love at the, her. Look at the picture you, of me and Clarence Thomas. <laughs> oh, I, I remember. Where, how am I going to find it? I don't know where it is. Alito taught my con law class my freshman year. We did taught one class. I asked him. We, we could ask questions. Or his questions. I can't remember what I asked, but he didn't like my question. Yeah. Just, Hassan, like, you want to rate my fit on that, on that pick? That pick is crazy. Where, we, how, how do I find it? DM it to you. I like you got so lazy with the chat that you're just like, come on, someone find it. Come on, chat. I mean, they probably said, will. I know, where, I know where the camera is, y'all. There's like a there's like a whole like setup here. Okay, I'm looking around at it all. I'm taking in my surroundings. <laughs> Hold on. Someone said to ask me to litigate on your behalf because you got blocked on Twitter. Yeah, they, they keep blocking. asking over and over again. I block blocked. so many fucking people on social media, so I would never tell anybody to unblock anybody. I'm not in a position to say that. I have thousands of people blocked. <laughs> uh, I have a policy. If I read your comment and I do this, blocked. <laughs> where is it? All right, where is where is it? I'm looking. I'm looking. If okay, we'll keep running me, this while I'm going to leave. I, I do agree that they're like trying to desperately make this happen, and it's just kind of mid. It's like no one cares. It's boring. Yeah. In this room, obviously, when I leave, I'm not going to press. Black Shadow here, born at the estimated time OJ killed that white woman. <laughs> Mom watched the Bronco chase in recovery. That's crazy. Um, My mother has actually never been on the right side of history. When it comes to show, not that she shouldn't have been pro OJ. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that my mother shouldn't be pro OJ. <laughs> You're pro OJ. I'm a defense attorney and I'm black, so let's be serious here. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying running over to Paradise Island to hand him your child seems a, a little a lot, mother. <laughs> Um, pro OJ also means you're kind of like pro Alan Dershowitz, though. So I guess there's that. Alan Dershowitz. That name sounds familiar. Who's that again? What do you do? He's the really bad attorney. Oh my uh, God. You don't know who Alan Dershowitz like. is? That's awesome. Hold on. The hold Dersh? On. What do you do? Jeffrey Epstein's, do Jeffrey Epstein's Jeffrey best Epstein. friend. <laughs> oh, why I gotta be? A, well, why is being pro OJ be pro him? He was on, he, the, team. He was he was on, on the, team. the dream team. Oh, the white. Oh, the, 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 the one. Um, oh, he I taught know at Harvard. And he's yes. always like, oh, I taught at Harvard. That's his whole thing. And why yeah. couldn't I be pro him? He also says he's he, the worst. He's mm. oh god, he's he's like the number one dick rider so of Israel in perpetuity. I wait, I don't think he got disbarred. I wish. No, there is no justice in the world. He would never get disbarred. <laughs> he uh he is uh he's written extensively about lowering the age of consent laws, but from a constitutional uh, from a constitutional framework, he believes that because 16-year-olds can consent without parental supervision to getting an abortion, they should be able to consent to sex as well. He wrote, like, a whole paper on that? Yeah, and then he defended it recently. To make what argument? Like, what argument was he making? He that, just like, wants to lower... Rage? Like, I, I, okay. He, okay. He definitely didn't kill his first wife. He well, definitely always wore his underwear every time he was at... Uh, Jeffrey Epstein's uh, Island and Lolita Express. Was he accused of killing his first wife? What I miss? Yes. <laughs> what it, that made me think of one of the first cases. His first wives. Uh, his first wife died under mysterious circumstances, and he did legitimately say, "Yes, I was, uh, you know, on Lolita Express. Yes, Jeffrey Epstein was my friend. 
but I always had my underwear on. So I'm not going to, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I don't know much about Jeffrey Epstein because, and I tried when that Netflix, I think it was Netflix put out a documentary. I tried to watch it because like white people are always talking about it so much. And I was just bored I to talk, death. I talk about it's, it's it to Alex, you all the time. So the white person I'm referring I'm to is Alex. I'm obsessed with Jeffrey Epstein. Me too. It didn't interest me. I don't really, I don't really know to be honest what it's about. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I, I don't. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I missed it. <laughs> Look at this. He wrote this in the LA Times in 1997. And <laughs> so I, okay. So I was, what I was going to say, the funny thing is I felt in my spirit when you started making an argument, I was like, is he making an argument like against like statutory rape? If there were an argument, I don't know what he's saying. I don't want to get a part of his foolishness, but if he were making the argument that statutory rape is a, is a strict liability crime in the sense, what, what it means, right? If there's something's a strict liability crime, it means it doesn't matter if the person knew, didn't know what happened. So like if a person is actively lied to or something, say they looked at, they took the the initiative to check the person's ID, like they asked to see the ID, they had a fake ID, it said they were the right age or whatever, the court will not regard that for a statutory rape. It's a strict liability crime. So I think in those instances, things like that is unfair. Now, what this man, now this man is just talking no, about he trying said to make there may even be constitutional fuck. limitations on making the age of consent too high. The Supreme Court has suggested in the abortion context that young women do have reproductive rights at a certain unspecified age. There are obvious differences between the right to choose whether to terminate an unwanted pregnancy and the right to have sex at all. Why do men have to always be sick bitches? Like, why must he be sick? Why didn't he make an, an actual legal caring argument about people's criminal justice rights? He just had to be a sicko who wants to fuck children. Oh, God. <laughs> like, oh, Jesus Christ. And it, this is what get, like, gets put on defense attorneys. Like, these are who are out running about. Like, He's also talking about consensual uh, sex with 16-year-olds. So not like... Strict liability, I don't think. I uh, think he's just saying, like, uh, since the sex was consensual, it is rare that the victim will come forward. Uh, it is ordinary rape rather than statutory rape if it's not consensual, as it off as it often is between older men and young girls. And this guy was good friends with Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, and also defended him, and, and very successfully, mind you. But Honestly, to just a series of unfortunate coincidences that yeah. he was advocating for this and then also happened to be very good friends with the child sex trafficker. Yeah, I mean, I think, <laughs> Your I think Honor. Jeffrey probably saw this and was like, I need him on the team. To be fair, though, when your client is like possibly... Crazy arguments like this. To be fair, though, if your client is like possibly, you know... Uh, affiliated with the State Department, then like you do get a sweetheart plea bargain that is unheard of. He got him. He got him to to get like work release as a pedophile. Lowered the sex trafficking of minors charge to I think like you, simply just having uh simply soliciting sex work. Are, oh, you talking about what Epstein? Yeah, and and Jeffrey Epstein at the time, like I mean. The, I, was I want, a serial. I want you to understand, like, when it comes to how white people are treated in a criminal system, it is vastly different. And, like, what I want to express to you is, before I became a public defender, I remember thinking, like, you know, an undergrad, you study these things and how the criminal system is racist. But I thought it was something like you need a magnifying glass to parse it out. Like, you have to, like, statistically see the difference in treatment. It's, like, cool, like night and day. Like, I remember the first time I realized, oh, shit, was I represented a black guy. That's when I first, first became a PD. But when weed was still decriminalized, but it was it wasn't legal yet. And I had a black guy that was like charged with having he was like found with a blunt prosecution acts for bail on him. Immediately after that, I represent a white guy found with a bag of drugs, obviously selling consent to release. Right. And like any time I've ever represented a white person, I don't have a I don't represent a white person for more than three court appearances. The case will get doesn't matter what it is like they're running from the police like tried to kill the boyfriend, beat up the husband. These are all real cases. They will, they will fucking go away. Like they, it's always like a vastly different world when you have a white client. So like that has nothing to do with the lawyering and sweetheart deal and everything to do with the kind of client that they have, because who you represent, who you're representing has everything to do with how the legal system like sees them. That's literally what arraignments are. It's like, what kind of person do you have here? And the court is like, fuck you. Mm, you got to, yeah. Jail for you and not for you. Was it a affluenza? Yes, affluenza. It's awesome. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Yeah. So, Which is sense. why this reinforces my position that the Trump case is good. <laughs> the <laughs> one <did> time. <laughs> I think that that also, like, the fact that the DA is black, too, also definitely uh, instills more racial animosity amongst those who are already going to vote for Donald Trump. Like, yeah. You're voting for Donald Trump for a reason, right? It's vengeance.